today we have the pleasure of speaking with Ms. Elizabeth Wager of the Committee on Publication Ethics, COPE. Liz, in your opinion, how have research processes changed over the past several years as far as the technological side of things? I mean, I guess it's an obvious point, but the availability of, of software does make certain kinds of publication misconduct just that much easier. I would say yes. that the one that we've seen most recently is image manipulation. Um, plagiarism and redundant publication you know, have been around ever since we've had word processors and copying and pasting. In fact, they've been around far longer than that, but it's now a lot easier to do. Um, image manipulation is an interesting one where research really relies on the digital image actually being the data. You know, it's not just a sort of nice illustration, but it actually shows your findings. And um, journals are increasingly aware that programs like Photoshop can be used to um, distort the, the images, and that's a cause of concern for them. So I'd say that's one of the, the most recent trends. And obviously, though, the, um, you know, the, on the plus side, you can also use the software to detect both the image manipulation and obviously, in the case of Authenticate, the plagiarism and duplicate publication. I mean, journals are realizing now as well that um, in some cases, it's, it's fine. You know, sometimes you actually are, are just trying to sort of clarify or there's a temptation maybe just to sort of prettify the image. Um, but journals are getting much tougher on that and saying, look, it doesn't matter if there are a few specs and a few bits and pieces. You know, we actually want the original image. Otherwise, we don't know, you know, what you might have cloned and added and moved. And there have been some quite uh, extreme cases of that, which, I mean, basically, it's a form of data falsification, but it's just a new one that didn't crop yes. up before people you know, had easy access to things like, like Photoshop. I guess the only other technological innovation that we are seeing, and as, a, as publishers, we're sort of intrigued by, but I'm not really sure what the effect is yet, and that's the, the sort of the speed of publication and the speed of comment on social networks. So we are sometimes seeing things picked up on the blogosphere or on Twitter. Um, there was a case. I think a few months ago of, um, I think it was a, a biology paper, which got corrected very rapidly, I mean, in a matter of days, because the community, the research community, tweeted about it, spotted something wrong, contacted the author. This was an honest error. This wasn't misconduct. The author went, oops, yes, see what you mean, got my calculations wrong, redid them, and got them back to the journal. So that's an interesting case of, of technology in almost, if you like, post-publication peer review. So it's not really yeah. impacting the formal pre-publication review, but it's a sort of extra layer that can be added on. And of course, in the past, we could have had a letter to the editor, but that probably would have taken months, whereas we're seeing it happening perhaps in hours and days now.